So here we go. My most challenging astrophotography shot ever. But not just over tonight, over tomorrow, over the next day, and the next day. 30 hours of exposure time I'm planning to put on into this card. I'm hoping for the best. This will definitely push the limits of what I can do from my backyard. Do you think that we can accomplish a good image? Well, let's find out, shall we? Hello and welcome back to the YouTube channel. If you don't know who I am, my name is Tanner from AstroTan and this is an astrophotography channel. Tonight I will be taking a picture of the Clamshell Nebula through my camera and telescope set up in my backyard, not in space. This will be my most challenging astrophotography shot that I have ever done in my entire year and a half of doing deep sky astrophotography from the backyard. I'm going to spend the most exposure time to get the most detail out of this image and improve that signal to noise ratio so I don't miss a detail. This will take a lot of hard work and dedication to get a good image such as this because this is a really challenging target. It's not one of those bright deep space objects that you might be seeing for recommendations for beginner astrophotographer targets. This is a rather complex and intermediate level target if you are willing to put in the work to get a good image of it. I plan on spending all week photographing this target and I will make sure that this is my best image yet. So come along with me on another astrophotography adventure adventure in the backyard tonight. And of course, I will be revealing my image of the clamshell nebula that I was able to get over this long and strenuous week of imaging. So let's get started. So for starters, what even is the Clamshell Nebula? Well, its actual name is SH2119, and if you're an astrophotographer, you might know that if there's a name such as that, it doesn't mean that it's an easy astrophotography target. It is a rather faint target in the constellation of, yes, Cygnus. I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I said I wasn't going to be doing anything in Cygnus anymore, but I couldn't help but recognize this target in Cygnus. I was just scrolling through Stellarium, which is a great planetary software, by the way, and I randomly came across this, and I had no idea that it was even there. It's right under the North American Nebula, which is a popular target for visual and astrophotographers. And it looked pretty cool to photograph, and at first I thought that it was going to be just as easy as those bright nebulae, but no, I was completely wrong. This is a rather faint and complex nebula, which emits HA or hydrogen alpha gas, which is the red color, and a little hint of O3, which is the blue color. Even though my filter I'll be using tonight will be able to isolate those nebulae from the light pollution and the moonlight that I will be dealing with tonight, I will still have that challenge of trying to maximize the exposure time on this target because like I said, it's not really a bright target at all. So I've decided to do something that I've never done before and that is to reach 30 hours of exposure time, let alone over a day of exposure time. This means pointing my telescope at this nebula for over 24 hours and 24 hours is a day. So picture this entire day going by and my camera and telescope is just pointing and taking images of this nebula for over a day. That's right, when the sun's out, when you're sleeping, that entire full rotation that entire day. As crazy as that sounds, even a day of exposure time is not enough for some targets. Even though this nebula is pretty faint, there are way fainter ones out there that require weeks or even months of exposure time. Recently, there was a group of astronomers and astrophotographers who took a picture of the Whirlpool Galaxy, or Messier 51, with 255 hours of exposure time. But the results do pay off as you get a lot of those details that you were not able to see with just maybe 20 to 30 hours of exposure time. That was their plan as far as I'm concerned, and they were able to get a lot of details that no one has ever seen before. So even though my image won't reveal any crazy, crazy new details. It will still be a pretty decent image of the clamshell nebula and will be enough exposure time to really get a nice detailed and enhanced image of the clamshell nebula in comparison if I were to only spend five or six hours on this target, let alone just one night. So I get a pretty good advantage when I'm out here in the
the backyard, unlike a lot of other people. I actually get a full view of the sky, unlike a lot of other people who might have trees or anything just blocking their view of the night sky. I get a complete view of things that are rising and also setting, and, and that means that I can image one target for the entire night and nights are around eight hours. You can get about eight hours of exposure time on a target nowadays. And I'm going to definitely use this to my advantage tonight. I'm gonna to be doing this all night, not switching any targets, just going straight for this target for however long that it needs to be. My primary goal is 30 hours, but if I can even go longer than that, then I will definitely do so if the data needs it. The longest project that I ever did was Messier 81 and Messier 82, or the Bodes and Cigar Galaxies, and that was around 22 hours of exposure time from the backyard. Even though the image was good, I still definitely could have gotten better results from a dark sky site, as a lot of those details normally get shrouded under a light polluted sky, so that means you will have to expose for longer and I didn't feel like exposing for much longer after all those hours. We have a bright waxing gibbous moon rising right now, and like I said, luckily it will not be much of a problem because in the summertime the moon skirts the horizon, so luckily it won't interfere with a lot of the nebula details that I'll be able to get. So why do we need to expose for so many hours and hours anyway? Can't we just take a single picture of this and have a complete image like we do in the daytime? Well, unfortunately not for astrophotography. Even though I say that a lot of these details deep space objects and, and all these galaxies and nebulae are actually bright. They're really not that bright in terms of normal things. So when you snap a picture on your phone of a scenic location like mountains, the sun, or anything just really photogenic in the daytime, you take something called an exposure, and, and it is a very short exposure because you get that picture as soon as you're done pressing that button. For astrophotography, when we press that button, it takes minutes, minutes and I mean three to five minutes to just get a single picture, but that's not where things end. We have to take multiple images over the course of the entire night and then combine them all together into one image to get a exceptional result. This is called image stacking and it is very important when taking astrophotography images because that's how you improve your signal to noise ratio. Without image stacking we would not be able to resolve a lot of those faint details that our human eyes are not able to see, let alone our camera is able to see in a single exposure. When we combine all these images together we will eventually reveal a ton more detail over hours and hours of time that we spend. Strangely enough, this is exactly how all these space telescopes do this. They take exposures of an object up in space and they will stitch them together or even combine different filters that they use to, to differentiate a lot of different gases and they will actually combine all these and it will be in a great image. Alright, so the sun is starting to set now, and it is almost time to get things started for the long project tonight. The weather calls for clear skies almost every day for almost the entire week, so I really am relying on the weather for this target. I'm expecting for everything to go perfectly every single night to maximize exposure time, but we already know that sometimes things just don't add up over the night. When I go to sleep, my telescope and my camera does everything all by itself. It will track and it will image the target all by itself and I will not have to be out here to monitor or even look at the exposures come in because it will automatically save my computer. So luckily while it does its thing, I'm gonna be doing my thing and bringing it in every morning and taking it back out again, polar aligning, it's a whole process guys. But it is completely necessary for taking an image such as this one and I cannot wait to finally get things started. So without further ado, let's just wait for this sun to go down and we'll get things started right away.
you guys, it is currently 8.46 right now, and it is absolutely dark out here now. The cicadas are done making those loud noises, the frogs and the crickets are all out, along with all of the screeching bird sounds that I hear every night. We are currently up and running, and we are imaging the clamshell nebula right now, and the subs coming in are looking amazing so far. I can already see a lot of that dark nebula structure, along with a lot of that red color that I was talking about. It really is quite peaceful out here. There's not even a gust of wind. It is just completely calm, and it's one of those nights that really come in handy when you're doing a project like this because any wind or something might interfere with your setup. I still can't believe that I'm actually imaging this right now and that I'll be doing this for like the next four or five days. This is the longest that I've ever done a project like this before, so I will be excited to see what results come with this large amount of exposure time. But as always guys, it is time to reveal the image of the clamshell nebula that will hopefully be up in process by the end of this video. So if you guys enjoyed the video, please come again and make sure you like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys later, and until next time, clear skies.